Klotz, would, uh, how can the SBDC utilize new legislation to help small firms secure financing? That's typically the most difficult thing for you know, small firms, small businesses, startups, uh, you know, securing that initial financing. I think through harnessing the uh, existing network of small business development center counselors that have already been in place doing very similar things with their clients, um, ad additional funding uh, for those types of initiatives can only improve upon and expand what they offer. Um, I could see new micro lending programs perhaps starting. Um, I know one of the gaps that I see in my own community are those who might have less than perfect credit, have great business skills, and an outstanding idea for a business, um, but just can't get through that banker's door. So maybe some sort of program. Uh, like a second chance financing program, something like that, would would be very beneficial. Okay, uh, Dr. Rackley, um, how do you think the rules for increasing transparency in, in the Women's Business Center Act will affect the WBC's ability to provide their services? Uh, we welcome the transparency. Uh, it's uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, we think that will improve the ability for us to, in all women's business centers, to be um, more transparent, to know more about what we should be doing, and, and for the local communities to know what, what we do. See, I need help sometimes to put my own. Um, <laughs> Mr. Selly, the, the Veterans Business Center Act shifts the Veterans Business Outreach Facilities Administration. Um, by the Veterans Corporation to the SBA. Um, is this a better model for long-term stability for the centers uh, or not? As one of the centers that was previously funded through the Veterans Corporation, we feel it's a much better model for a couple of different reasons. For one thing, it really brings legitimacy to our program. It allows us to report our successes. We love to brag about what we do. We love to brag about our, our clients. and. In, in, our, in our experience with the Veterans Corporation, while it's been troubled getting funding out of them, in addition, it's been even more of a struggle getting our successes processed through them and up to the people who've given them money, which is this Congress. Mrs. Kilhoffa, how do you think that small businesses will respond to the online education and distant learning programs contained in the Education Entrepreneurial through today's Technology Act? The initial response would depend on their age. I'd like to first <laughs> state that. Um, what we typically find, though, is that as opposed to traveling, the distances involved to um, attend a small business development center or a seminar at a college or university, they will choose distance training over um, the travel anytime. And so putting them together in a situation where they can take advantage of the training with a group and have the advantage of multi-generational, you know, older, younger, together, the technology becomes less intimidating and the benefit is there for gaining the knowledge. And you, I'm sure you get the assistance from some of the younger students in right. the class to assist the uh, uh, more senior members of the class. It's very typical of what happens in our adult classes, yes, yeah, it's sir. It's kind of amazing how the young students, uh, their whole life depends upon the technology of the day, and I think the Blackberries run this Congress, so. Uh, <laughs> I've noticed that. We, we find ourselves constantly on the Blackberry, so. Uh, Mrs. Waitling, um, Waitling uh, Mills, um, what is your opinion on the applications of benchmarks uh, to the SCORES program? Oh, dear. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I really don't have an adequate answer to that. Okay. I'd have well, to research it and, uh, and respond to you at a later date. Sure. No, that's, that's, that, that's perfectly uh, Will the SCORES legislation strengthen the network uh, capabilities for local entrepreneurs? Um, yes, very much so. I mean, that's, that's where we shine in, in working one-on-one -on -one, uh, with local individuals and uh, helping them uh, often with multiple score counselors with mm -hmm. with multiple expertises in whatever they need to get their businesses up and going or if they're existing businesses to help them through these difficult economic times. Very good. Ms. Grace Pock, 
Uh, Proctor, um, you talked about the Eastern Band. Why do you think one of the most important, why do you think the biggest factor for the Eastern Band to basically um, not want to re-up the, um, in the program? Well, you know, if, if you did even take that one tribe and you add the, the other 540, you know, to get into um, the entrepreneurial, to where they can go and help, it takes adequate funding no matter what we do. Uh, we, like we said, we have nationwide over 540 different tribes, Alaska Native corporations, I mean Alaska Natives, Hawaiian, uh, Native Hawaiians. So that's why we were asking for that increase in that funding because if we don't have enough to do our job, we're not able to to provide the procurement. We as Native Americans want to help our Indian community. So we have the training. We are the experts in Indian business. So we, that's what we have there with the uh, the, the Eastern Band. And, um, you know, so it, it's a difficult thing to do when you don't have enough funds. Sure. And so in order to do it right and help your entrepreneurs and help them with the procurement centers and to go after government contracts, if we don't have enough money, and I think it's the same if, you know, it's, it's with, with, with the women's, the veterans, the rural, we all share the same, the same goal is that we want to help the people in our communities that we represent. And Absolutely. that's why we're here.